Okay, so here we're going to dive into the ro uh, into row context, or another way to think of it is the iterating engine. Okay, the calculation engine, the iterating calculation engine. This way, this way, it really clears things clear, cleared things up in my mind as soon as I started thinking about it like that. But from a more technical perspective, it's called row context. All right. So I'm just going to just clean up a couple of things here, just to highlight some key points. Okay, now the way that you you basically call the iterating engine or get into row context is by utilizing iterating functions. Okay, now a perfect example is one we covered earlier called sumx. Okay, and so remember what this particular function did. It innate, it asked us to, and let's see if I can get it up there again. It says it returns the sum of an expression evaluated at each row in a table so you see here the expression is basically any logic that we want to place at every or, or complete at every single row of a table which we specify okay and so remember how we sort of generated what you could calculate in a, with a calculated column within this measure well what's happened is that the evaluation context is applied if you think about it but then what we do in behind here is we then, let's we'll say in behind each individual result, is we then jump to the sales table or the table we specify. And then at every single row in that table, we go and run some logic. We go quantity times the current price. We, we then save that into memory at every single, like all of those calculations done at every single row. And then once all of those results are saved into memory, we then go and sum them up. And that's how we ultimately get these results here. So the evaluation context is first, stage one, stage two, because of we've called SIMEX, we've gone into and, and are utilizing um, the iterating engine, calculation engine, and then we're evaluating every single row because of that in row context, and then we're getting a, a result based on um, those evaluations at every single row, okay? And you can get really advanced inside of here. Anything that you could sort of imagine that would go into a calculated column, you know, could can go in here. You can write if statements. You can write switch statements, which is another way to write if statements. You can write, you know, any type of logic that you want to do at every single row can be done within um, within an, an iterating function like this. Okay, and SumX is not the only one. There's also there's also AverageX. So we we could average this if we wanted. You know, AverageX calculates the average. Um, of a set of expressions evaluated over a table, you know, there's also there's also minx, and all these are doing uh, is we are we are running this calculation in a row context rather than a filter context, which just looks at everything that's left over in a column after all of the filters are put in place. What the iterating engine does is a bit more um, comprehensive, is that it then dives into every single row after those filters are put in place, and then goes and runs logic. Uh, evaluates an expression or logic at every single row okay just as a side note i want to show you something interesting okay you see here we've got total quantity like this sum of the quantity column okay so that's evaluating this particular result here what we could do is we could calculate exactly the same result here but we could calculate it using the iterating engine rather than the, the um, aggregating engine or the or filter context, okay? So what we could do is we could create a new measure and I could go, um, I could call this one. Um, where is it? Hold on a second. I could go this total quantity, um, just alt, um, or I could go um, iteration and uh, total quantity iteration just for demonstration purposes. I could go here, sum x, and then I could put my sales um, table there. And then I could reference my quantity column. And that's it. So instead, so think about this. We, we, and then I'll push enter, I'll bring this in. So we are basically calculating exactly the same result. So look, these are all, the results are exactly the same. But after all the evaluation context is done, we're, we're doing it in two different ways, using two different calculation 
methodologies or engines within a DAX itself, okay, or within Power BI. This is using the filter context and this is using the row context because we have called here an iterating function, sumx, which calculates it at every, it goes and runs the calculation at every single row. Now, I, if you can use, because you've got to think that computationally, a lot more is happening here with iterating functions, right? On a simple model with, with small tables, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But when you talk about much larger ones, if you can, much, much larger data sets and models, etc., if you can calculate up exactly the same thing utilizing, say, a sum, I would do that versus a sum x, okay? So I would, like, to be honest, I never would do something like this. I'm just I'm just highlighting the, 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 the difference, right? Because you can just calculate this up with a simple sum, okay? So it's unnecessary to overload you know that the, this calculation more than what it needs to be but something like total sales right the only way we could calculate this based on the data that we had was we needed to run an iterating function there was no way for us to calculate this with a, an aggregating function like sum okay so that's the, the, the those are the these are the sort of things that you've got to th have a think about but you know hopefully it's more clear to you what is actually going on behind the scenes around you know calculations it's interesting Within, say, say you use Excel, like, and this is just from personal experience. Like, when you have used Excel, you haven't had to really deeply think about, uh, like, how is this, like, what is going on with this calculation engine when I'm running this calc, you know, or, or evaluating this formula in Excel. You never, well, I personally never really thought like that. But in Power BI, you kind of do because you need to understand well, when is it best to use an iterating function versus when is it best to use an aggregating function and this gets more a little bit more complex the more advanced you get the more advanced formulas you use um, and and also when you start combining formulas together when you when you bring multiple functions um, in together um, so it is important to get a really good grasp of it here before you then start moving into you know more complex things um, like you know we might branch out into cumulative totals or moving averages or um, a whole raft of different things uh, that you could ultimately calculate and you know that's not even I wouldn't even call that terribly advanced inside of Power BI you, you can get super super advanced you know around what you what you calculate within DAX and um, that's the kind of the stuff that I, lo I love talking a lot more about and, and where I've invested a lot of my um, you know time and energies and in, in, in content creation because I really like that side um, well that, you know that's what I think Power BI is amazing for is that really high quality analytics and it all starts with having a good understanding of this first okay because even in some of that more advanced stuff you know I'm 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 you know in the back of my mind saying okay what is the initial what is the initial or evaluation context of this particular result because I'm truly trying to understand what is being calculated okay so that's um, what I want to cover around you know these these core concepts of context and next we're just going to go over just a few things to consider a few additional things to have a think about around around context